how to perform Umrah simplified. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah in this short video we're going to summarize the rights of Umrah from A to Z. How to perform Umrah simplified. Umrah can be summarized into four main segments, four main parts. The first part is at the Miqat when you put on your Ihram. The second part is going to the Kaaba and doing Tawaf seven times. The third part is going between the two small mountains Safa Marwa. And last but not least, cutting or trimming your hair. Let's start with the first part. The first part, you're at the Miqat. And there are many Miqats. The main one, if you're coming through Medina, is the Dul Hulayfa. If you're not coming through Medina, then most likely you're coming through the aeroplane and the aeroplane will announce the time that you're going past the boundary. Once you're at the boundary, you need to have your clothes ready and on. So for the men, you need to don two white sheets, two white garments like I'm wearing. One on top and one at the bottom. For the women, they can wear anything that is modest, that is covering, as long as it is not um, covering their face and they're not covering their hands. So the women, they're not allowed to wear a niqab. They're not allowed to uh, have a niqab that is strapped on top. They are allowed to put a khimar, a loose khimar on top of their head that comes down, that's not tightened. There's a difference between the two. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited the niqab and the wearing of gloves for women. Everything else is covered modestly. As for the men, they're only allowed to wear those two sheets, those two garments that I'm wearing. Nothing else underneath. No shirt, no vest, no boxes, nothing. And you can have your sandals and your slides. You're not allowed to wear trainers and shoes. Once you've put the correct clothing on and you're at the boundary, then you need to make your intention. The intention here is to perform Umrah. And when you do Hajj, you, perform, you have the intention for Hajj. But right now, it's for Umrah. What do you need to say? The exact words are لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً One time. And you say that if you're doing it first time or every other time you want to do it for yourself. If you're doing it on behalf of somebody else, then you need to say the following words. لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً عَنْ so and so. So you say, I perform Umrah on behalf of, and then you mention their name. And I'll give you an example. I'll do it for someone called Khalid, for example, who passed away. He was my friend. I say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً عَنْ Khalid. And this will, this will make you enter into the state of Ihram. The state of Ihram, ayyuha al-ikhwa, comes from the word Haram. Haram means prohibited. Why is it called the state of Ihram? Because you have a state of halal where you're allowed to do a certain things and now when you go into the state of Ihram, it becomes haram for you. Examples, cutting your nails, perfume, having intercourse between spouses, all of these things become haram once you've entered into the state of Ihram and you've made your intentions. From the Miqat point, up until you reach the Masjid Al-Haram, then it's recommended for you to do the Talbiyah. The Talbiyah is لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ You repeat this up until you get to the masjid. It's recommended for the men to say it out loud and the women, they say it in their own voices, يعني, not loud. Once you get to the masjid, then you stop saying the talbiyah and you read the dua for entering the masjid. This dua is read when you go to any masjid and specifically now, when we are starting our Umrah, going into Masjid Al-Haram. The dua is, Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, Allahumma ghfil li dhanbi wa ftah li abwaba rahmatik. And then you enter with your right foot, and now you've gone inside the Haram, you go to the second stage, the second part, going around the Kaaba. We're here now for part two of how to perform your Umrah. Behind me is the Kaaba. We're going to go around the Kaaba seven times, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Whilst we're going around the Kaaba, we're going to begin at the Hajr al-Aswad, the black stone. You're going to raise your hand one time, your right hand facing the black stone. And you say in your first round, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. In every other round after that, and you say Allahu Akbar one time. You do not copy anyone else that's around you. Some people will do it two, three times. Some people might kiss their hands. 
We're not copying anyone. We're doing it in accordance to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whilst we are walking, um, the men specifically have to have their right shoulder open. It's recommended for the brothers in the first three rounds to walk with haste. Not to run, but to walk with haste. I'm going to show you an example. So you walk like this. And you don't run into anybody, you don't harm anyone. You just continue going like this for the first three rounds. An important thing that we need to mention when you are going to do your tawaf around the Kaaba is you must have tahara, you must have wudu. If your wudu breaks in any part of your tawaf, then you need to go out, make ablution, make your wudu, and start all over again in the most correct opinion. There is another opinion that says you continue from where you're going, but the Prophet ﷺ, he compared the tawaf to prayer. The only difference is you can talk whilst you're doing your tawaf. So if it's similar to prayer, if you, make, if you break your wudu when you're praying, you have to start from again just like that. You have to start your tawaf again. Wallahu a'lam. So the green light is directly pointing towards the black stone which is behind us. And that is the beginning of our uh, tawaf. We raise our hand one time, as we said, and we say Bismillah Allahu Akbar in the first round. And every other round we say Allahu Akbar. So we're coming up to it right now until we get directly to the black stone. And we say Bismillah Allahu Akbar for first round and Allahu Akbar for every other round. Simple as that. You don't kiss your hand. You don't do it two, three times, one time alone. Now that you've started your tawaf, you can make any dua, uh, 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 supplication, remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you like. Whether it's for yourself, for your parents, if you want to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, whatever you please to do. Um, a side benefit I'll just mention quickly, between the black stone, al-hajr al-aswad and the door, between the door and the black stone is a place called al-multazam. If you make dua between those two, your dua is accepted as mentioned in the hadith that is authentic. So now we're at the Yemeni corner, al rukn al-Yamani. From this corner back to the start point, you're going to be reading a specific dua. The Prophet ﷺ instructed us to read. That dua is, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ And you just keep repeating that. You don't say any other dua up until you get back to the start point where you began from. The maqam of Ibrahim is where Ibrahim السلام, he stood on top of when he was building the Kaaba with his son Ismail. There's no specific reward, there's no reward at all. There's no virtue connected to touching it or seeking blessings from it or the likes. The only thing that is connected to the maqam of Ibrahim is to pray two rak'ahs after you finish your tawaf. So when we finish our seven rounds, in the last round, there is two opinions. Either you say Allahu Akbar or you do not say it. After you finish that, you go behind maqam Ibrahim, anywhere behind that you can find space. It doesn't have to be directly behind. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And take the maqam of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. After you finish your tawaf, you pray two rak'ahs behind the maqam of Ibrahim. The maqam of Ibrahim is the golden dome, if you like. Um, behind it, anywhere behind it that you find space, you pray your two rak'ahs. And the first rak'ah is recommended after reading Surah Al-Fatiha to read قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ and in the second rak'ah after you read Fatiha, that you recite Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. This is the Sunnah. It's recommended after finishing your tawaf to drink zamzam water if it's easy for you. If there's too much traffic and there's no problem, it's not obligatory. Um, you, can, you can drink sitting now. Prophet ﷺ one time in Hajj, he drank standing up as well. So it's both allowed. Don't forget to say Bismillah. The Prophet ﷺ, he also said, Zamzam lima Zamzam is for whatever you drank it for. So if you drink it and you make dua, Allah Azza wa Jalla will accept your dua, inshaAllah. Make dua before you drink. We're going to the Mas'a now. The Mas'a is the third part of your Umrah. The Mas'a is basically the walk between Safa and Marwa. Two mountains that Hajarah, uh, may Allah have mercy upon her, was walking between seven times in order to look for water for her son Ismail. We're now heading to the Safa mountain and this is the mountain behind us of course it's gone smaller over the years this is our beginning point when you get to the Safa you begin by reciting the verse Inna Safa wal marwata min Allah, and you stop there you don't complete the whole verse then you say Nabda'u bima bada Allahu bih we begin with that which Allah Azza wa began with and what did Allah begin with in the verse he began with the Safa before Marwa. Indeed, Safa and Marwa are for the places of worship of Allah. So we begin with Safa, then we go on to Marwa. We only say this at the beginning of Safa facing the Kaaba. After we've done that, 
Then we read a adhkar that we're going to say three times. We're going to say it um, at Safa and at Marwa at every time that we stop. And that dua is that you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wahdahu, anjaza wa'dahu, wa nasara abdahu, wa hazama al-ahzab wahdahu. You say this three times. In between each time that you read it, there's a dua that you can read. Your own dua, unrestricted. So you read it one time, you start making your duas. You read it a second time, you start reading your duas, and you read it a third time, and you start making duas. This one, you're gonna, as we said, repeat it in Safa and Marwa at every time you stop. That's the only thing you repeat here. Every other time when you're walking, you can make any dua that you want. You can recite Quran if you like, you can pick up the Mus'haf and recite from it, anything that you wish. All right, some of the mistakes that some people fall into when they're standing here at Safa is some people, they mistakenly raise their hand towards the Kaaba. This is not a place of raising your hand. You don't need to say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, no Allahu Akbar. You don't need to wipe this. There's nothing special about it. It was made maybe a hundred years ago or less. Um, the mountain, obviously you can't go there anyway, but it's not recommended to touch it or to seek blessings from it. The only thing you do here is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us from reading those specific adkar and making your duas. This is your beginning point and you need to go to the other mountain, Marwa. And another thing that I need to point out is you don't need to walk around. So in the upper floors, first floor, second floor, sometimes you need to go around because that's the only way, the queue. Sometimes when it's not busy, you can just take a left from here and continue going to Marwa. You don't have to go around. You face the Kaaba and you make your duas when you're at Safa. So we're here, we're starting at Safa. An important point that I want to mention is um, we count from Safa to Marwa as one round. And on the way back from Marwa to Safa, that's the second unit. They're going from Safa to Marwa third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then you end up in Marwa. You finish at Marwa. Make sure you don't do one full lap back to Safa and count it as one. We'll be doing 14 laps. That's not what's required. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven at Marwa. Nice and easy. Let's go. So when we are going between Safa and Marwa, specifically for men, it's recommended for them to run between these two green lights. So you're going to see the men behind me running, so you run as well. With regards to wearing sandals or sliders when you're doing your uh, walking between Safa and Marwa, then it's allowed for you to wear them. Uh, it's not sunnah and it's not sunnah to either wear or not to wear. Remember, um, just a hundred years ago, there was no marble here. It was ground and people used to wear their shoes. So we don't say it's sunnah and it's not, not sunnah to wear or not to wear your sandals. It's your choice, what's easy for you. And it's probably better and easier um, for you to wear your sandals and slides. It's allowed for you to pick up a mushaf and to recite Quran when you're going between Safa and Marwa because it's a remembrance of Allah at the end of the day. The best remembrance. So as we said, between Safa and Marwa, we're going to be repeating the same dhikr that we mentioned at the beginning without the verse. Starting from Allahu Akbar three times. At the end point, we finish our Umrah. It is not recommended to pray two rak'ahs after you finish your Marwa. It's not Sunnah and it's not recommended. It's not being authentically mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ, so we don't pray. Once we finish, then we exit and we head to our final part of performing Umrah. So we're here at the barbers at our last stage of Umrah, which is cutting your hair. Um, for the men, it's recommended for them to shave their hair completely off, and that is the better thing to do. But you can also trim your hair. The Prophet Sallallahu made dua for the one that shaves their hair three times, and he made dua for the one that trims their hair one time. As for the sisters, then when they go back to their hotel, or where they're staying, they can get a pair of scissors, they grab their hair, and the back of their hair, they put it all to the back, and the back of it, they cut the size of a thumbnail. The, thumb, the size of a thumbnail, a little bit, they cut it, and that's enough. And with that, you've finished and completed your Umrah. May Allah accept it from us and from you, and give you many more trips and journeys like this.